rolled into the dirt-packed village square after hours of bumpy, rutted roads. I stepped out of the new Toyota four-wheel drive and noticed that about 50 Peruvian women in traditional hats and skirts had gathered, were huddled together, the far wall in the square. Their faces were expectant, or apprehensive, or both. Let's see, what do I do now? I saw one woman who sort of looked like a leader, so I walked up and attempted in my halting Spanish to say hello. Nope, that was not going to work in this Quechua-speaking village. On a whim, I grabbed my wallet, I opened it up, I found the picture of my two daughters, and I showed the picture to this woman. She smiled. She pointed to my daughters. She pointed to me in my eyes. She smiled again. And all of a sudden, I was surrounded by 50 Quechua women, all under five feet tall. I've never felt taller in my life. <laughs> all of whom wanted to see the picture of my daughters. In a few short minutes, we had shared something that mattered despite the vast differences in our worldview and our life experiences. I've worked in international aid and development for over 25 years. I've been involved in multi-million dollar special initiatives and global collaborations. But I've become less and less sure of the, the value and impact of big aid projects over the years. And I've become more and more confident that lasting solutions come from walking alongside local people as they identify their needs and pursue their aspirations. My contention is that we need to think differently about how we think about other people and about how we can help. Change the world, change your attitude. I have three suggestions on how to proceed. First, don't be naive. We all come into the question of how can we help with assumptions. They may be as simple as, if I go over and, and, and share my time and energy, the village will achieve X and Y. Or they might be a little more nuanced, like if we build a school and train the teachers and provide curriculum material, education will be improved. We need to challenge our assumptions. We need to learn what others have learned who have gone before us. We need to understand how good intentions do not always result in positive outcomes. Second, zip it. <laughs> Instead of projecting our ideas on, on what they might benefit from, we need to listen and learn. What do my Peruvian ladies dream of in terms of the future of their family, their children, their community? What is their worldview? How do I understand that? What do they think about me? How do they think about me? Aaron Osland was a community volunteer with Mennonite Central Committee for three years in Bolivia. Afterwards, he wrote an essay called Staying for Tea, in which he articulates principles he feels are crucial for the successful, to be successful as a community service worker. He suggests, for example, that results are more important than values, and that process matters more than outcomes. And he says, stay for tea. Enter humbly. Accept respectfully the hospitality of a stranger now becoming our friend. Listen. Learn. And not just for a day or a week, but for a lifetime. And if you're traveling in Mongolia and visiting a rural Mongolia family, all you have to do is, you don't have to drink the whole bowl of IRAG. You just have to sip it. IRAG is fermented mare's milk. We've got horse, goat, and camel for you today. It's a bit tart. Third, embrace the guinea pig. Apologies to any of you for whom eating a guinea pig may seem a little offensive, but in the highlands, in the Andean mountain highlands, most small villages, most villagers raise guinea pigs for the most special celebrations in their village year. 
On another trip, I'm in another village. I'm visiting a water project that CARE helped a community build. We were welcomed like kings and queens. We come down the last lane into the village and children were standing along both sides of the lane holding flowers in, in, in welcome. We met the elders, and then we got a meter by meter tour of the new gravity fed water system by the proud community water committee. We stayed overnight and had a bonfire that night. And towards the end of the evening, one of the village leaders motioned for, to one of my colleagues to come over. And the leader took his beautiful wool Highland Andean poncho off and he put it on to my colleague. My colleague was a little startled, didn't know what to do, and sort of made to take it off, and the village leader said, no, no, it's a gift. Thank you for coming to our village. I thought about that later. I think that would be the equivalent of you or I giving a car, our car, to a visitor in appreciation for their visit to our home, knowing that you may never see that visitor again. Generosity beyond comprehension. Hospitality of the highest order. Respect for elders. Intergenerational connectivity. This village may have been poor in material assets, but they were very rich in other assets, and perhaps we might say things that matter. And by the way, we did have guinea pig for dinner that night. Not too many meat on those bones, and it's a little greasy. So you may be asking, why me? Why should I think about a Peruvian village? Why should I change my attitude? I think it starts with values. Do you agree with our friends at the Gates Foundation that all lives have equal value? If so, what does that mean for your commitment to justice globally? Second, when we learn and experience others and other ways of doing things, it often brings new ideas new perspectives, and maybe better solutions. And third, it works. Small projects can make a difference, and they can aggregate into larger success. In northern Peru, I met the mothers of Trujillo. This was a group of ladies who had gotten a small grant, started a soup kitchen. From that modest beginning, they leveraged that into a daycare, a sewing workshop, getting a physician to come into the neighborhood a couple times a week, and they had a lot of other plans percolating as well. I was humbled and inspired by these women, by their drive, and the fact that they had identified what they wanted. They had built their programs. It was from their vision and their hard work that they were making a difference in their community. It was an honor to meet them. It's not hard to begin. Did you read about Grace, the Grandmothers for Class and Race Equity? A group of eight grandmothers here in Seattle who are working together to support public health in the Ivory Coast. It's a big tent. There's plenty of room in the tent for all of us to find a way to start, to build a partnership. Over to you. Challenge your assumptions. Change your attitude. Listen and learn. Embrace the guinea pig. Be a giver, be a partner, not a giver. Join the movement. Change the world. Thank you.